Hey folks, welcome back to The Bite Bit. Uh, before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to take a quick second to kind of bring up a topic here. Uh, I've actually been busy for the past couple of months with, uh, you know, work and life. And uh, unfortunately, it hasn't given me the chance or the opportunity to sit down and record some videos that I really do have in mind to kind of put out there. Uh, I have actually a bunch of videos on things such as Linux storage and administration, RCHSA uh, certification, uh, and, and you know, sort of topics along those lines that I think might help those administrators and users coming into the Linux world uh, for the first time or just uh, getting to know the, the OS. So unfortunately, I haven't had the time and, you know, that's kind of put uh, some distance between my last recorded video and this one. Well, you know, things have sort of settled down a little bit for me and I think it's going to afford me the capability of the time really to sit down and start recording some more videos. So hopefully you guys will see that uh, coming across in the near future. Anyway, as always, please do comment uh, if you'd like to. Uh, I do kind of enjoy reading the comments, getting to learn myself, kind of sharing ideas and concepts along with uh, each video or topic that gets discussed. All right, well, uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. In today's video, we're going to talk about Flatpak and some of its general terms like installation, app installation, and uh, removal as well. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Flatpak or Snap or that terminology, uh, I am going to post a link in the description by a YouTube user called EG. I think he does a pretty good job of going over the differences, similarities, and the concepts of Flatpak and, and Snap. But to give you a general point uh, of discussion here, Flatpak is a container-based installation. That is to say, you can have a game or utility or an application that is uh, all zipped up in one, which means it has all of its dependency files that it's looking for, all of the library and installation files it needs, all in one file that you can uh, pull down, install, and utilize or use. But that's really not the benefit of it. There's two major benefits of it that I want to point out here, which I think should um, allow and urge the Linux community to move towards. The first is that you know using a flat pack application or utility or game on your system is OS independent, which means that you can install the same application on Ubuntu and you can go ahead and turn around and install that same application on Arch Linux. You don't need to worry about the OS or the distribution of Linux you happen to be using. That's fantastic. You know, that's going to afford uh, developers out there the ability to create an application and not worry about the underlying operating system. Point number two, it runs in a sandbox environment. For those of us, like myself, who have to monitor and administer, you know, hundreds, thousands of users' environments every day, you know, anything that affords us the ability to keep that operating system up and running without downtime will always recommend and always use almost always use. So, you know, the idea that you can install a flat pack application or game or utility and have it run in a siloed slash um, sandbox environment whereby it doesn't affect the um, system 32 files, to put it in the Windows terminology world, or your root files or your main system files, that's fantastic. So, you know, as a general sort of uh, point of, of direction, I think the Linux world really should look at this and pay more attention to, and I have a feeling that's the direction we're going to take. It's going to force us to be more unified, and it's going to force or allow for applications to have better visibility and a larger footprint for users to use, regardless of their distribution of Linux that they have selected. So let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at Flatpak in the installation form now. Okay, so we're going to start by taking a look at a web page that I think we're uh, pretty handy and I think we're going to utilize it for most of the video here. Uh, and that's flathub.org. Now, flathub.org is in beta as of the recording of this video, but I'm sure the folks behind it will keep uh, progressing and, and uh, move on from there. Now, it does offer you two basic sections here. The first one is a quick setup, which we'll take a look at. Another one is actually browsing your apps that you can install. I'm going to go ahead and click on all here for a second, and we'll full screen it. And you can take a look that even now, in its current state, there are a whole slew of applications and games and utilities for you to install. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't get these from your existing favorite repos, or it doesn't mean that you can't get them from the web page or the developers themselves, but the key difference here being that these apps are, of course, the Flatpak container-based apps. So, technically, you should be able to run them on your distribution of Linux uh, and not have a problem 
uh, in that regard. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, install section here uh, real quick. When you do click on the quick setup here, you're given a list of the distributions to select from, uh, SUS, Linux, Mint, Fedora, uh, Debian, Arch, so on. Since I'm using Ubuntu, I'm going to go ahead and click on Ubuntu here. And as you can tell, with the four basic steps here, you can get the framework installed, and you can go ahead and install your applications that you need. Now, I do want to point out um, just a, a big point here, or something uh, critical about the Flatpak environment. And I believe it's the same for Snap. Uh, I could be mistaken on that. Right now, there isn't a front-end GUI to use to actually install the Flatpak applications. I mean, you can actually open up your favorite package manager, whether it's Synaptic or uh, even the Ubuntu store the software app and you probably see the apps installed in there but you may not have success in installing them because the the actual package managers may uh, are not aware of what the flat pack extension is so obviously they can't interact with it now I'm sure that's going to come down the line and there'll be even a standalone app that you can probably install as a package manager for flat pack apps and this way you can see what are what's installed what uh, you know you can install and what you can remove as well so I'm sure that's coming down the uh, the plate or the pipe there real soon. But that being said, in order for you to install a Flatpak app, it's actually really simple. It's a single line uh, that you can use to install or uninstall the apps and pretty much go on from there. So uh, it just means you have to open up the terminal to do so. So I'm going to show you that process now. And again, at the record, at the time of the recording of this video, we don't have a GUI-based installation process. But uh, by the time you watch this, um, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe months down the road, it could certainly change. And so please look out for that. Uh, before you get started would be a suggestion of mine. So let's go ahead and just resize the window here and I'll bring this to the right hand side. I'm going to open up a terminal window here and I'm going to log in as root just because it's easier to work with. This user doesn't have full sudo access. So let me change that. And I'm going to go ahead and type in or rather copy and paste the first line here. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I've already installed the framework, so and I've even rebooted, as it suggests. So this will go a lot quicker for me than for you. So do give it a couple of minutes to uh, let it finish that process. All right, we'll go ahead and perform an update here and uh, let that finish. That shouldn't take too long. There we go. And let's go ahead and actually perform the install. So we'll paste that in there and enter. Now, I've already installed it, as I said, so there's, uh, it's basically letting me know that I've already installed the newest version and there's nothing new to install. So let's go ahead and paste the next command, which is to install the plugins that it needs. And of course, it's telling me I have them already installed. Now, this is the part where I think might uh, bring about some changes for your, uh, your package manager. What we're doing is we're actually installing the repo, the repository for flat hub that'll allow us to install the applications. So if I actually copy this over here and I paste this into the terminal and I hit enter, it's not going to give me any updates or messages or anything like that, but what it's going to do is install the uh, repository in our PPA group. So let me show you that real quick. So if I open up the software uh, app here, the software and updates app, and I click on other software tab, you can see that I've got the Flatpak Ubuntu. I'm running the Artful Artwork uh, version of Ubuntu, so that's why it has that here, but it's checked. So now that I have that in there, if I were to close this out and I bring up the, uh, the Ubuntu software application here, uh, it's just telling me you couldn't get some reviews, that's fine by me. Let me go ahead and click on install, then I'll say uh, Spotify. go let's try that again All right so you can see that I have Spotify listed uh, but I also have it uh, listed uh, yet again so there's a dual occurrence here but of course at the bottom it actually says that the source is this dlflathub.org um, so it's essentially searching those repositories and giving me back the results that I'd expect However, there is a big difference. If I were to actually click on Spotify here, you can see it's pre presenting me with the description, some details. It's giving me a link to go to the website, uh, so I don't have to worry about you know all of that uh, in essence. And it even shows me the source of where I'm going to pull it down from. But if I were to click on install, uh, it'll go through process here, and let me just click this message away. It'll say unable to install Spotify as it's not supported. So let me click that again one more time and you see that it shows that. I imagine that if you used your uh, package manager on your distribution of a Linux and you try to install a Flatpak app, it probably won't be able to do that just yet. 
uh, but of course time will let that change. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out or minimize this and let's go ahead and install it the only way that currently works, which is through the terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, install some apps here and uh, I could browse the whole section, but Spotify is the first one. So let's go ahead and do that. When I click install, it's going to present the you know save dialog box from the browser that you're commonly aware of. But instead of using it with software install, which we know won't work, I'm going to go ahead and say save file, and I'll click OK. And of course, that's going to throw it into my downloads folder. So I'll go ahead and click on that to open up the folder. And let's go ahead and minimize the browser. So here it is. So I have the Spotify client package, and you can see that it's a flat pack uh, reference file. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to my terminal. I'm going to type in flat pack, install, and I'm going to drag the file into the window. What that essentially does is uh, present the path where the file currently lives, right? It just makes it easier for us to install so we don't have to type a bunch of things, uh, and it makes it uh, quicker as well. So I'll hit enter, and it's going to go through the process. It actually tells me it's installed, uh, which is fine. In fact, we're going to go ahead and, and uninstall it uh, later on, and you'll see that, but it would go through the process. So let me pick another. Uh, app here just to show you so let's go back to the browser and we'll go back and uh, let's pick uh, Skype Skype is easy enough let's go ahead and say install and we'll say OK and we'll open up the container here okay, bring it about here it is and we'll go back to the client at uh, the terminal rather cloud pack install and I'm going to drag this Skype client file again that's just so that the path will present itself in the terminal window I'll hit uh, enter and let it do its thing so it'll take a little bit of time while it goes and gets the files that it needs it'll download the data and we'll go from there so I'm instead of you guys having to watch this process complete um, I'll go ahead and pause the video for a little bit let it finish and then I'll come back to you once it's uh, done okay and so that finished for us and that's it you know the apps been installed uh, of course, it's going to run in a sandbox uh, environment, which means that it's not going to affect any of the core operating system files and your root uh, volume. So that's always a plus uh, to keep in mind. And of course, if I click on the menu here to show our, our installed applications, I'll scroll down. Here's Skype. And of course, if I click on it, it'll start up and I'm assuming ask me to register or log in to the uh, application. And that's essentially all it is. I mean, it's not really involved uh, in terms of, you know, technicality or prolonged steps here. Simple couple of commands and, and you get the system up and running. And a single command gets you any application installed. Well, let's move on to actually uninstalling the application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of Skype here. And I'm going to type in Flatpak again. And I'm going to say list. And what it's going to do is list all the applications that it currently has installed on the system. Now, if I actually want to install uninstall something, it's actually just it's just as simple. So Flatpak uninstall, and then you would copy out the um, the name here. All right. So copied out the name, and I'm going to hit Enter, and it'll go through the process and remove it from the system. That simple. So again, one command to install the product, one or the app, uh, and another command to uninstall it should you need to. And if I run the same list command, you'll see that uh, I have Spotify because that was there before, but the Skype is actually no longer there because it's been removed from the system, which I think is, is uh, kind of straightforward and not really difficult to do. So that's covering the installation of the framework, that's covering uh, the installation of an application, and also uh, the way to uninstall or to remove the application should you need to do that. Uh, that essentially covers the video of what I wanted to kind of go over. Now there's a bunch more in terms of the differences and similarities between Flatpak and Snap. Again, uh, the video link I'll put in the description kind of go, uh, goes over all of that in case you guys are interested in looking at it a little bit more in detail. Uh, and hopefully uh, you guys can give this a try and the community behind these container-based applications grows. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys have any comments, uh, questions, please do put them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to take a look and answer as best as I can. Thanks and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.